Good afternoon lads and lassies, the Irish Demon here, back with another video. Rockets. We have had rockets for centuries now, long before the internal combustion engine was even conceptualized. But it seems that some people today still don't quite understand how rockets work. The concept of rockets is actually quite simple. On one end you got the flamey end, on the other end you got the pointy end, and all going well, the pointy end stays up, the flamey end stays down, and you don't have a rapid unscheduled disassembly. That's the most basic rockets, of course. Today, rockets are extremely complex and really, really difficult to understand how they work. They don't call it rocket surgery for nothing. Today we're going to be looking at this guy who claims to be a college professor. Now he doesn't claim to be a professor of rocketry or anything of the kind, he claims to be an engineering professor. And he is trying to explain why rockets cannot work in the vacuum of space and I'm going to show you why he's absolutely wrong. So let's get straight into it. Basically it's just impossible, it cannot work in the vacuum of space, it's just impossible. Physically it's impossible. Yeah. So, uh, what about all the scientists? Are they all lying? Or? The thing is that we have understood the word scientist wrong. Look, I'm a scientist, I'm a mechanical engineer, and I have a master's degree in technical physics. And I work as a research and development scientist. But when you say a scientist, you think that these guys are out there and they are just exploring the universe and trying to find the secrets of the universe. No, it's not like that. They pay us to do certain things, certain tasks. And if they don't pay me, I'm not going to go search those stuff. And even if there are some people like me who do think about it, uh, the thing is that since childhood they tell us that the rockets do work and the NASA is sending stuff up, up into the space, and so you're just programmed since childhood, you're not going to be questioning that program. And even if you do question that program, people will laugh at you, people will judge you, they think you're stupid. So you, start, you end up losing your jobs and friends and stuff. So the scientists, they don't do that to themselves, it's just, it's a stupid thing to do. So straight off the bat, this is a pretty bold statement to make. Basically, he's saying that all of the scientists in the world are just going along with this hoax of rockets being a real thing and NASA sending things into space so that they don't lose their job. Literally all of them. Take that into your mind for a second. You're talking about thousands, tens of thousands, even millions of people who are involved in the sciences and mathematics and all of those kind of things who would all need to be lying. Just bear that in mind. Not to mention all of the world's space agencies, all of the world's private space companies, and even enthusiasts. They would all need to be lying. Every single one of them. Even if it's the truth, but you just don't do it. The reason that you do think that rockets work in the vacuum of space is because of the third law of motion. The third law of motion states, as it, it says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So well, it's really easy to test that. Let's put this into action. Uh, an action is, for example, I'm going to start punching now. So I'm punching, and I don't feel any reactions. Do you see a reaction? I don't feel any reaction. But then I start punching the wall. I feel the reaction. I mean, you can try it. You feel the reaction. If it starts hurting, and if I punch harder, it's going to bleed, and if I punch even harder, it's going to break my bones. So it seems like the third law of motion when in order for you to get the reaction, the equal and opposite reaction, you have to apply your action on something. If it's nothing, then you don't get the reaction. For example, if I'm now pushing, I'm, I'm now pushing myself, okay, I'm, I'm pushing my hand, and no reaction, I don't feel any pushback. But then I push the wall, and I feel the pushback. So, you cannot just push nothingness and expect something to happen. There has to be something. Tell me, but what about if I, for example, uh, in a skateboard and I have a ball, a bowling ball, let's say, and I throw it, I go backwards. So. Look, when you are standing on a skateboard and then you are pushing a 15 pound bowling ball, mm -hmm. that 15 pound bowling ball has a static inertia. It means it wants to stay static, it doesn't mm -hmm. want to move. So when you are pushing that, you are pushing yourself back. If you think that the third law of motion works in these kind of cases, then you can just throw a pen, just see if you go backwards when you're throwing a pen. Throw a balloon, throw a, a, a light object, and yeah, cool. <laughs> so you have a balloon, and you can push the balloon and see if you go back, or a ping pong ball. It doesn't happen. It's starting to feel like this whole situation is a little bit convenient. These questions seem to be really in line with what the lecturer is trying to get across at this point. 
and they just so happen to have a balloon there. Now, just because an item is extremely small compared to the mass of your body, doesn't mean that the third law of motion is not in action at that point, it just means the effects of it are not as easily recognizable. Now, he says that if you throw a bowling ball that it's not gonna have an effect. Obviously it does, you can test that, it certainly does. When you throw a pen, you definitely don't feel the effect. It doesn't mean that the effect is not there. And bearing in mind, of course, that we are in an atmosphere and we're on a planet. So it's a little bit different to being in space, but. It's starting to feel a little bit convenient. These questions definitely seem loaded to me. Uh, the same thing when you're pushing a car, you know? Have you ever tried it when your the car is broken and you're pushing it? At the beginning, it doesn't move. It's heavy. And then after some time, it just moves slower. It's, it got out of that static inertia. It's now moving, so it's easier to push it. It's not uh, that difficult. So in order to get this reaction, you have to push against something. Otherwise, it's not happening. This guy, the reason it goes up is this high velocity and hot gases that exit the exhaust of the rocket engine will push against the ground first and then it takes off and it goes up. The air down here becomes thinner. But even if it's thinner, the speed of these gases will turn that thin air into a barrier. You know when you are, for example, driving in the highway and you stick your hand out of the window mm -hmm. and you feel this pressure and the faster you go, the more pressure you feel? That's the same thing. Even if your hand is small, then the speed is high, the pressure increases, the it becomes a barrier. The same thing in here. You're just equating two totally different concepts here. Drag is a thing. Thrust is a different thing. Yes, thrust can make drag and whatever. It, it doesn't really matter. What you're saying is simply wrong. A rocket doesn't take off by pushing against the ground. Certainly it does help, much like a fighter jet pushes off a kind of a, one of those ramp things to help it to build up that thrust and give it more pressure, whatever the case may be. But that's not the only way a rocket launches. And it has nothing to do with a rocket in the vacuum of space. So I don't know why you're even talking about it. It pushes the hot, these hot gases and high velocity gases down. Even if it's thin, it still <coughs> creates a barrier out of it. Mm -hmm. So as long as there is air or thin air, the rockets do work, but when it goes out in the vacuum of space where there is nothing, then it's nothing. You can push it and mm -hmm. nothing will happen. Completely false. A rocket in the vacuum of space does not require an atmosphere for it to push off. It utilizes Newton's third law of motion, which states that every action has an opposite and equal reaction. Or in the case of Mrs. Demon, every action has an opposite and equal overreaction. Please don't tell her I said that. So basically when a rocket is ignited in a vacuum, what happens is the hot gases shooting out the back end generate thrust and it has an opposite reaction in the opposite direction to the push of those gases. Again, flame me in that way, rocket go that way. It's a very simple concept. This is easy to test actually. Look, you can get a single drone and just put it on the ground, accelerate it, so it lifts up from the ground and hovers at 20 centimeters. Do not touch the accelerator anymore. Just put a cardboard sheet under the drone and just lift it up. When you lift it up, the drone starts uh, coming up also and it maintains the same 20 centimeter distance between the bottom of the drone and the sheet. Mm. And the moment you take the sheet out, you take it away, the drone just drops down, hits the ground and the heating the ground happens due to inertia. Hits the ground, comes up and maintains the 20 centimeter distance. So based on these observations, based on what I just showed you, pushing, punching and the drone which I, I can show you actually, we can go outside and I can uh, demonstrate this. It's impossible for the rockets to work in the vacuum of space, it just doesn't happen. The third law of motion happens when you apply your action on something and that something can react to you. When there is nothing, there is no reaction. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. And the thing is, many people say that the rockets don't work in the space because there is no air. No, you are just misunderstanding it. They are carrying their own liquid fuel and they are carrying their own liquid oxygen, so they don't need air. That's not the problem. The problem is this pushing act that you have to push on something. So you will say that they don't move. They cannot move up in the outer space. When you're in a vacuum, no. This doesn't thrust. It doesn't produce any thrust. Even if, if it's like it's producing its own fuel, it doesn't. It wouldn't move. It wouldn't move at all. Because as I said, you have to push against something in order to feel that reaction. 
To quote my friend Dr. Tony Purcell, PhD, birds are not rocket powered, mate. Guess what else is not rocket powered? A drone. So why is that even relevant? Yes, we understand that drones require an atmosphere to fly, the same as an airplane. We don't expect an airplane to work in space either. It's, it's completely a straw man argument. It has absolutely nothing to do with what you're saying. Yes, a drone needs an atmosphere to push off. No, a rocket does not. And back here is a vacuum now. I mean, everywhere is a vacuum in this space. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to push against and done. It's just not happening. Evidently, what's not happening here is your ability to understand Newton's third law of motion. Again, it does not require an atmosphere to push off. I've explained it, it's not that hard to figure out. There are a lot of examples of people actually testing this in their own vacuum chambers at home. You put a rocket motor in there and you can put a thrust testery thing on the front of it and you can see that it absolutely works. My friend and fellow creator Team Skeptic is about to take ownership of an awesome vacuum chamber and he's going to do his, this test for us to show us all how this works. Anyway, let's continue. But before we do continue, I just want to very briefly draw your attention to something. Unfortunately, due to our ag algorithmic overlords misinterpreting a response video to somebody who left a horrible uh, video about me, my channel has actually been demonetized, so I'm unable to receive any ad revenue. All of my members are gone, all 72 of them. And also I can't receive super chats. So if you would like to support this channel and support my work, you can check me out on Patreon and also you can make donations uh, on PayPal, which is linked in the description down below. Thank you so much. Other ways you can support the channel is like, leave a comment down below, which helps an awful lot and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Back to the video. So, yeah, we can actually go outside and try the yeah. drone thing. So, I'm not a good pilot, so I have to try to balance it first. But let's try, try our best. Okay, there we go. So, as you can see, I'm not pushing the gas anymore, and we go up. You see, I'm not touching the gas. And then it comes down. You go up, 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 as much as you want, and there you go. And the 20 centimeter is maintained, and then we go up again. You see, it needs something to push again, otherwise, it drops. Yep, simple as that. B based on this, you can see rockets just cannot work in the vacuum of space. It's done. There is nothing you can say about this. Oh, trust me, there is plenty I can say about this. And to quote the former president of the United States of America, wrong. You're completely wrong on this. This guy claims to be a professor, he may well be, but just because you're a professor doesn't give you the right to talk about things that you know nothing about. I know a professor of psychology who definitely would not be able to talk about rockets because it's not his area of expertise. Simply claiming that you're a professor, clearly being, giving, being given loaded questions for you to kind of grandstand on seem to come from the same person and perfectly timed and you just happen to have all of the uh, things that you needed to prove your point. It just all seems a bit strange to me. Now, when he's doing this bizarre thing with the drone, that's real cute and all. There's a few issues with it. Number one, quite simply, it could be the sensor. My drone, if I put my hand under it, the drone goes up. If I take my hand away, it goes down. It resets its kind of center point of where it can fly to. That's the first thing. The second thing, and something that I touched on earlier, drones, aren't rocket powered, mate. It is completely irrelevant how a drone acts in Earth's atmosphere, especially when you're talking about how a rocket acts in space. So you, who clearly doesn't understand what he's talking about, seems to know more than all of the scientists in the world that deal with these things every single day. You are suggesting that either A, all of those people or most of them are lying, are indoctrinated, or C, that they don't know what they're talking about, despite spending their whole lives 
working on it. I know I totally forgot to say be there, but I couldn't go back over it. Anyway, lads and lassies, this is just another example of a very poor attempt to claim that space is fake and that space flight is fake and all the rest of it. The numbers are staggering involved when you're talking about how many people would have to be involved in this big hoax, this big scam that they're claiming is going on. I'm going to do a video in the future explaining exactly how many people would need to be involved in this whole hoax for it to be true. Lads and lassies, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, do like, comment and subscribe. It goes an awful long way to helping the channel. Uh, and again, unfortunately, I'm not gonna earn any ad revenue or super chats for this video. So if you would like to support me, please consider becoming a Patreon, which is linked in the description down below. Or if you really want to, and if you enjoyed this video, a little tip on PayPal will be absolutely awesome and very well received. Uh, also, we've got a bit of a Twitter campaign going on at the moment, asking YouTube to review their decision about demonetization monetizing my channel and dealing with that whole situation. So if you want to check me out, my Twitter will also be linked down below and you can give me a hand with that. Anyway, lads and lassies, thank you so much for sitting through this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you the next time. Sláinte.